We are live. We are uh, live every Tuesday, in case you're new here. Um, I know there are a couple of you that uh, have been coming in uh, new here, and I'm really excited to have you here. And it's been so lovely just um, getting to know you all and, um, you know, figuring out what you need, what I can do for you as your vocal fairy godmother, as I call myself. And um, sorry, I'm, I always get so weird about my hair when I go. <laughs> Not great. <clears throat> um, so uh, I just wanted to talk today about um, the stuff that we covered in day one of our Every Note is Easy training. Just a little bit. I don't want to go too far in, in depth with it, but I want, um, because I want you to go watch the training, of course, um, which you can do with a link in my bio. I just put up the replay inside the community and um, it's great. It's ready to go for you. Just for you. We had some great people in there this morning. Um, really awesome comments and a good discussion. So um, <clears throat> we're talking today about what my one of my favorite topics um, Number one, what your <coughs> excuse me, what your goal is, your big rainbow win, I call it. Um, and you don't have to have like a terribly specific one, although I love those. Um, <clears throat> I want you to think about like how can we get beyond what we're used to just telling ourselves is possible. And I think that's really important as an artist, as a creative person, because otherwise, if we're not allowing ourselves to daydream and to get out of that little box that we put ourselves in, of the possible box, the what's, what's reasonable, what's responsible, we get so stuck in that. If we don't allow ourselves to get out of that, we find ourselves not taking risks um, as, as singers, especially when you're not allowing yourself to take risks, you are, number one, you're not going to touch anybody's heart, you know, you're not going to get to anybody on a deeper level than just, I'm a good singer, <clears throat> which is why my work is, is technique and mindset and mind, body, spirit work combined. Um, and number two, you're not going to experience all the possibilities that your voice can possibly do. And there's a lot of possibilities. Like, I mean, think about all the voice actors of the world. Like, they could have never discovered their, like, uh, best characters if they didn't allow themselves to just play and sound silly once in a while and to get out of their comfort zone and take a risk. And they didn't um, stop themselves from dreaming, you know, beyond what they thought was responsible. If I <clears throat> personally had in high school when I said I wanted to write songs and be a singer. If I had said, yeah, I just want to play open mics for the rest of my life. I'm fine with that. Open mics are great. <coughs> I don't need anybody to know who I am. I'm just I'm just going to pop into a, a new bar all the time and just play for people and then peace out. <laughs> if I had said that, that's probably what I would still be doing. Honestly, I would be like, selling myself short all the time just for no good reason like I think we have been so trained as people as artists um in our society I don't know about other cultures but <clears throat> feels like it's pretty worldwide to stop ourselves before we do something big because of the other people's voices in our head telling us well, why would you do that? Like, why would you take a risk and maybe have it not work out? Like, so many people think that way 24-7. Like, they just never take any risks and they never um, go into daydream mode, like I was saying, into your rainbow wind um, visualizing self um, because they're just so worried about being safe and comfortable all the time. And if you're here... I have a feeling that's not you. I have a feeling that you want more from your voice. I have a feeling that you want to sing louder, to sing better, to sing easier so that other people won't get mad. <laughs> Honestly, that's it's the weirdest um, ironic thing 
that like we don't sing because we don't want to make other people mad or we don't want to disappoint them or if we don't want to make them think uh, that you're a bad singer. But then the reason why we want to be a singer is so that we also uh, be a better singer so that we don't. Wait, am I saying the same thing? We want to get better as a singer <laughs> um, so that we don't make other people mad, so that they don't think we're a bad singer. But then also the reason why we don't sing is so they don't make other people mad. That's what I was going for. Okay, got it. <clears throat> Thank you for your patience. Um, I'm blaming it on um, three weeks post-COVID. I don't know. <coughs> it happens. Um, you see my little twinkly lights? I just put them up. They're pretty cute. I don't know if it's too basic, but I like it. It adds adds a little flavor. Um, so that's why I want you as a singer, as an artist, to start thinking a little bit more outside the box of the responsible box. Because if we don't let ourselves do that, then we're always doing less. We're always holding ourselves back, holding our true self in, holding our true voice in. And if you're talking physical, it literally creates injury. If you're always holding yourself back and never letting the allowing the freedom, the openness happen in here lit on your literal physical mechanism. All these muscles, if you're worried about getting something wrong all the time, they tense up. They hold on for near life so that no pops or cracks or weird noises come out. And that is a recipe for injury. That's the number one most important thing. But also, icing on the cake, if you continue to hold yourself back and not think about what's possible for you outside of your normal self, of your normal, what you think is possible. Um, I'm going in circles with my words today. I apologize. <clears throat> if you don't allow yourself to do that, you're literally not even considering opportunities that you might have. Like if you just go um, sing in the shower forever and ever, and you never even do an open mic because you're too afraid of what might happen, then you're never going to get to the next step past open mic. And you may have never even dreamt of that because you never thought it was possible. And so you may never even go to an open mic because you're not thinking that that's a thing that you want to put yourself out there so much and do. And I see a lot of people that come into my studio that are in this mindset. So they come in and they're like, okay, I want to be a better singer. <clears throat> and I'm like, great. What do you want to do with your voice? And they're like, I, I don't know. I, I haven't thought about it. Or the more frustrating one is like, they come in and they go, I, I don't know. I just, I just want to, you know, sing better in the shower. I just want to not hurt people's ears. I'm like, oh dear. There's the, uh, the programming has really, really gotten to you and it's really weighing you down. And that's not your fault. It's how we are raised, how we think about singing, how we're taught to think about singing, how we're shown to think about singing. I mean, one of my favorite metaphors is like American Idol, <clears throat> the voice, that whole complex. Sure, I wanted to be on it for many, many years because it's like the thing to do as a singer and people, millions of people watch you all over the world. But that culture, <coughs> this reality show, um, singing competition, culture has made us think that that's all everybody's singing is being judged on is like your ability to get up on stage in front of millions of people and to accurately sing this song and if you don't get it at this high 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 level then you're gonna be kicked off the island so to speak you know and so there's so money layers that come in with being a part of that culture. I mean, I think the first season of American Idol was on when I was in junior high, maybe high school. So most of my adult, all of my adult life pretty much has been in the shadow of this competition culture. And so, so many people who have gorgeous, gorgeous voices and could daydream and could do more things with their voice have shut themselves down immediately upon watching that they're like oh i could never be on the voice i'm not a singer i'm just gonna stop singing i'm not as good as kelly clarkson or whoever else is on there i'm not as good as those people i could never win the voice so i might as well just stop singing and that's 
freaking bullshit. And it makes me mad um, that society has done this to our youth, myself included, and I'm not young anymore. <laughs> so like, if you think about all the ways that the rainbow winds and the, the dreams that you had when you were a little kid <coughs> have been squashed by, yes, you, but it's more like your gremlin voice that is a combination of all of your teachers and um, the people you see on TV and random people you've told about your desire to, to sing and they're like, oh, good luck. <laughs> you know, that stuff sticks with you much more than the positive feedback way more than the positive feedback and when you take the initiative to say something to to speak your dream out loud and it gets met with that kind of attitude oof that's rough it's really rough especially when you're a kid it really messes with your ability to daydream it really really does and i see kids in in my studio all the time 12 year olds that are just like eh i don't need to be a better singer my mom just making me come here even though like two, two, three years ago, they're like obsessed with singing. They want to be a pop star. You know, they've just given up all those dreams because they don't think it's possible. And they've been shown the way to just settle, settle for maybe the baby version of what you want to do. Like, oh, sure. Yeah, go <clears throat> sing open mics. But you can never be a pop star. That's a problem for me. This is a problem when people's parents are telling them that, when the stuff that they watch on TV every single day is telling them that. So I want to know from you, when you were 12, what was your singing dream? Who did you want to be like? Who did you want to go sing with? Did you want to be on TRL? I'm dating myself now. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I want to know. I'm very curious. And I want to see how we can get you closer to that point. I think it's really a fun uh, experiment to think about your old self and your old dreams. Sure, things change. You know, you, your dream may be totally different than it was back then. Um, and if it is, I want you to dig into your inner child now and ask them, what do I really want? If anything was possible, if I stopped being responsible for a minute, if I stopped thinking about what was realistic, it's my least favorite word lately, what's realistic, if I stopped thinking about that, if I stopped being in that mindset all the time, what do I want to do? And there's going to be thoughts that come back in. You start daydreaming a little bit and the gremlin comes back in. And it's like, who are you to think that? It's never going to happen in a million years. Notice that. Notice that gremlin voice separate from it, grab it, set him off in the corner, give him a little pat on the hug and tell him to go take a nap. Because if we can't separate from that voice, then anytime you let yourself daydream, you're squashing your inner child. And that leads to, I don't know, so many mental health issues. And most of all, it leads to injury when you're trying to sing. And it leads to you never growing you're just going to stay stagnant and if you're here i imagine that you don't want to stay stagnant so um cool that's what i had to say today um <clears throat> i just realized i was not recording on instagram i didn't push the button oh well i'll uh do it some other way <laughs> um anyway I'm glad that you are here. So grateful for all of you for being here. And um, I really want to know what you, what your rainbow win is, what your dream is. And tell me what is the voice that keeps getting in the way and where did it come from? If you can tell me. And one or all of those things, I want to know. Put them in the comments. Um, we talked a lot about other stuff um, today in the challenge, uh, but kind of all related in the same vein. Like what's what's going on here? What's going on in your soul when you sing? Like, what's the thing that is stopping you? What is the thing that's holding you back? Um, so yeah, that's what I want to know. And uh, I love you very much. And I'll see you soon. <laughs>